Hi again, everybody. I'm Darlene Merkler with Inland Caregiver Resource Center. And I'm here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. And on this past Tuesday, I did the first part of critical documents, and today I'm going to do the second part. But before I get into the second part, uh, for those of you who weren't here on Tuesday, I talked about uh, healthcare uh, critical documents and two forms that I talked about. I didn't have samples to show you then, but I have them now, and I wanted to show you what they look like. One is the five wishes. And the other one is the pulse, the physician's order for life-sustaining treatment. Those were two of the forms that I talked about on Tuesday. You can still uh, listen to that Facebook presentation uh, on the ICRC Colton page. Inland Caregiver Resource Center is a nonprofit organization that helps family caregivers and seniors over 60. And we are still helping our clients. Most of our services are virtual now. All 11 support groups in San Bernardino and Riverside County are virtual. And we are gearing up for in May to do some of our, what we call toolbox presentations, which are will be an hour long. Uh, we're gonna be starting to do those as well virtually. So I, I showed you this list on Tuesday. These are all the critical documents that not just caregivers, not just people over 60, but everyone should have in place. So I'm going to talk about everything else on the list besides the healthcare one, because that's what we focused on on Tuesday. The next section is called essential documents, and that includes the last will and testament. A lot of people will tell me that they, oh, I, I have my papers in place, I have a will. Well, just having a will is not really having all of your documents in place. A will tells your loved ones where you want your personal belongings to go after you pass away. It has nothing to do with while you're living. Okay, so that's the only thing that the will does. And then the power of attorney, I had mentioned on Tuesday there are two different kinds of powers of attorney, one for health care and one for finance. We talked about the health care power of attorney on Tuesday. Today I'm going to talk about the financial power of attorney. If something would happen that you became incapacitated and were no longer able to pay your bills or take care of your finances, then um, you would have to have someone that you trust, of course, that could do that for you. So that the financial and healthcare power attorney can be the same person, or they can be two different people. The other part under uh, essential documents is a trust. If you have a trust, everything I talked about Tuesday and so far today would be included in the trust. And of course, you can get that through an, an attorney. I suggest an elder law attorney who specializes in that field. And most attorneys do give a free consultation. So if I would suggest talking to someone uh, before you put all these documents into place. The next section is um, titled Marriage and Divorce. And underneath that section is your marriage license and or divorce papers if appropriate. And the reason for that is unfortunately when someone passes away, sometimes a divorced spouse will show up and say, you know, show the marriage license and say, I'm married to this person, I'm entitled to their inheritance. So that's why it's really important if you do, if you are married and, and you want your spouse to inherit everything that you have or part at least part of it you need to show the marriage license if you're divorced you need to have that in place so that the wrong person doesn't get get the money get the money the other pay document under that section is military discharge papers and the reason that's there is you're probably aware that uh, veterans are entitled to some benefits 
the one that I mostly talk to people about is a, a benefit called aid and attendance. Any benefits with the military, you would need to have your discharge papers. So because that shows the dates that you served and the date that you were discharged and what type of discharge you had. So any uh, veteran who uh, served in the military during a war period, which right now that would be like the Korean War, Vietnam War, and uh, has anything except a dishonorable discharge, may qualify for this aid and attendance benefit, which pays quite a bit of money towards in-home care and assisted living. So for that benefit and any other uh, military benefits, you would need discharge papers to show to the, the VA. And all these documents that I'm talking about, it's a really good idea to have them all in one place. I suggest a three ring binder and you can just have different sections. One for health care, one for your trust or will, and so forth. The next section that I want to talk about is life insurance and retirement. So any life insurance policies that you have. I remember when I was growing up as a little girl, my grandfather, they used to have insurance men that people that would go door to door selling insurance policies for like five cents a week or quarter a week or whatever. And he bought everything anybody ever uh, was trying to sell him, he had. So when my mom started taking care of that, my her parents, my grandparents, uh, we realized how many life insurance policies he had. And some of them luckily were cash value so she could cash them out and use that money to pay for their care because you only really need one um, life insurance policy. The other thing is any retirement um, documents like an uh, IRA, individual retirement accounts and other investment accounts. You need to have that accessible to your financial power of attorney. Next is banks. And just as I was talking about before, it's, it's imperative to your financial uh, power of attorney to know what uh, you know have a list of the banks all your usernames and passwords because nowadays most of us do our banking online and if you're suddenly not able to pay your bills someone needs to get into your accounts to be able to pay your bills for you and then also if you have any safe deposit boxes because if you have say investment documents or uh, deeds to a cemetery lot or something like that in your safe deposit box, um, your um, family would need to access those. The last section that I want to talk about today is a proof of ownership. So if you own a house, land, and cemetery or a cemetery lot, you need to have those deeds accessible. I'll tell you a story about a cemetery lot deed. I was working with a family and the mother passed away and the family had a funeral and after the funeral they came back to mom's house and they were looking through all the documents and her files and going through things and, and getting ready to sell the house. And they came across the documents that she had already paid for her funeral and had a cemetery lot, which no one in the family knew about, so they paid for it again. So just as I was talking about on Tuesday, any of these documents that you have, you need to make sure that someone knows where they are. It's great to just put them all in a three ring binder, maybe even give a copy of everything to your power of attorney so that they have access to it right away. So any um, house deeds, land deeds, or cemetery deeds. Also, escrow mortgage accounts or vehicle titles. So if you have a mortgage on your house or you have a vehicle that you have the title to, it would be good to have those documents accessible. Also, proof of loans and any debt owed. Um, the, your loved ones would need to be aware of that. 
Stock certificates, savings bonds, and brokerage accounts. We talked about that a little bit, but we need to have those documents accessible. And the last uh, doc, critical document is any um, corporate operating agreements. If you own a business or if you're in a partnership um, for a business, then your loved ones would need to have those documents so that they can take care of everything that needs to be taken care of uh, when someone passes away or becomes incapacitated. I'm an only child and I lost both of my parents within it the same year. So I know how much is involved with that at the end of life. So anyway, I have this list. If anybody's interested in having it, please let me know. I'll be glad to send it to you. I will be on next Tuesday and Thursday at noon again. Next week we're going to be talking about heart disease. And just in closing, I would like to say that Inland Caregiver Resource Center is a not-for-profit organization serving family caregivers and seniors over 60. We are operating and we are helping our, our um, clients um, with all the services that we normally provide and we're doing that virtually. So we have 11 support groups in San Bernardino and Riverside County. Those are all being virtually operated. Um, also, we are gearing up for what we call our toolbox presentations, which will be one hour presentations. We'll be advertising that on Facebook as well to um, so that people can sign up for those and uh, get that education ongoing uh, virtually as well. So it's a whole new normal for all of us and we're all learning and doing the best that we can. I hope that you all are well and that you're taking care of yourself, doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And I hope that soon we'll be able to see each other in person. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Bye.